This episode of Defining Diabetes on the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by Companion Medical, makers of the InPen. You can find out more about the InPen at companionmedical.com. On today's show, Jenny Smith and I are going to define a term from your diabetes life. And this one's very specific to the podcast. Stop the arrows. What does that mean? This is going to be one of those where I'm like, Jenny, hey, I made this up. What do you think it means? And Jenny's going to tell you. That's how this works. I say, Jenny, define this. And Jenny goes, oh, that means this. And then I say something. I'm like, ha ha, I think this, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, oh, I agree with you. Blah, blah, blah. Then maybe sometimes she'll be like, I don't agree with you. And then she'll be more clarifying. And then it's over. Defining diabetes. There it is. That's the magic. Please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise, and to always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. All right, you ready for Jenny? She's particularly delightful in this episode. why don't we define a couple of more like podcast tenants? Uh, And so this is where, this is where I ask Jenny to define something that I've made up. uh, And that way she can. (laughs) These are always fun. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Cause so, you know, I had, you know, we did the, we did defining, you know, over bolus, which again is just a word I made up uh, and, uh, and we'll do some other ones. So we've done a couple um, and some of them are, are bigger ideas or not just words. Right. So, Mm-hmm. If I told you that I consider stop the arrows to be a real diabetes term, it is It is to me. And I think enough people do it now that, um, that I'm buying into my own, my own hype uh, a little bit on that. If I said to you, can you define stop the you arrows? You are because on our, assess- on our assessment, many people actually say, I, fo- I, I found you from the juice box right. and I want to be able to stop the arrows. And many of them actually have it like in quotes, in quotes as if they're like, it's Scott's term. So I have to like quote him on it. So yes. I, <laughs> let me just say, I appreciate the attribution. I really do. Uh, I get ripped off a lot in this space, Jenny, but when people say they heard it from me, it makes me feel better. So that, uh, that's yeah, there you go. I like that. Um, so stop the arrows. What does that mean to you? To me, essentially, you are both up arrows and down arrows and very significantly straight up arrows and whatnot. It's essentially just it's reacting to the arrow and saying, I need to stop this and plateau it. I want to get it to even out. Mm -hmm. And that might be with some type of insulin adjustment. It might be with a little bit of insulin adjustment and some food of some type, but that's stop the arrows. Pay attention to, and I, I think stopping the arrows also has to do with alerts and alarms too. So I think that needs to be brought into the picture because unless you're physically like looking at your screen all day long, you may not see some of the arrows to stop. <laughs> and I don't want people to stare at their glucose monitors. Right. I very much am against that idea. Like you, I, that's why I like your alerts being set in tighter tolerances so you can find yeah. out earlier and do something sooner. So yeah, so when I first thought it, like when I was, and trust me, I didn't sit down in a you know think tank session and to say, I wonder how I could describe to people. I was just in a moment in my life, and I saw these arrows, and I thought to myself, I got to stop these arrows, and you know, and I just I have to like why look at this happening here. So in my mind, I see it as, you know, you guys have heard me describe it before. I just see it as putting more resistance on the side of direction that the arrow is trying to go. If the arrow is trying to go up, I try to put more insulin over top of it to push the arrow back down again. If I if I have an arrow going down, I think of it as putting food underneath it to push it back up. The other day, I described it to somebody. So I am going to say something. Um, I'm going to give myself credit for something. I, you should. I speak in pictures. I, I really do. And I know that about myself. And sometimes I'd like, you know, I'll do the tug of war thing. And then somebody won't get the tug of war thing. And I'll be like, oh my God, they didn't get that. All right, I'll say it like this. So I was trying to describe stop the arrows to somebody the other day. And I thought, they're not getting it. And then I said, hey, you're a football fan, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, so imagine your offense goes out on the field. 
with a regular offensive line, a center, two guards, two tackles, and a quarterback behind the center, and you get sacked. On the next play, you might bring in a tight end and ask the tight end to help block. Now, if you still get sacked, you could bring in a running back and tell the running back, hey, after we say hike, stand up, chip a blocker real quick, knock him off his path a little, and then go out and try to catch a pass. And if that doesn't work, you might bring in another tight end, right? So in some scenarios with insulin, five linemen do the job. Five linemen can keep back a low blood sugar, right? Keep you from getting sacked. Or keep back a high blood sugar, keep you from getting sacked. But sometimes you need tight ends to block too. Sometimes you also need a running back. So sometimes you have to bolster your side so the other side can't get to you. And that's insulin. Like, it, mm -hmm. like it's just how I, like, it's just how my silly brain sees it. Like, like, so if you're trying to get low, like your blood sugar is trying to go low, that's the defense sacking you. You need more blockers. And in that scenario, those blockers are carbs. Right. In the exact reverse situation, if you're trying to get high, then the insulin's trying to sack you and you need to keep the insulin away from your quarterback. Like, right, you know, or, you know, I'm sorry, if you're trying to go high, now the carbs are driving you up. You need right. more, you need more insulin. So you bring in, instead of blockers, you bring in like attackers, like people to like push back in the end. You're just trying to keep this, this never ending back and forth like this, just like a pirate ship, just rocking back and forth. You're just asking, like you're putting a hundred people on the deck of a boat and telling them run to the right, run to the left, run to, run the, to, left. to the right, right, run to the left. Like, and again, that is how, and really, you just want them eventually to like run to the right, middle, right. so it all run stabilizes a slower, out. Or do this, do that, and then eventually, exactly, <laughs> every hundred people be in the middle, and they'll be like, "Oh, what's our job now? We got the boat stabilized." Just stand still. <laughs> and I am totally going to blow my own horn and tell you I've never had that thought before until I just had it right now because my stupid brain works in pictures. Okay, so that's what you're trying to do. I've in the past described it as scales of justice but have holes in either side. And you're constantly putting in insulin in one side and carbs in the other and just trying to keep them from flopping down on one side. Mm -hmm. So any way you can think of stopping the arrows, I don't care. Like whatever picture you have to paint in your head. But the truth is, is that if it starts getting away from you, you can't stand there and watch it, right? Because then your quarterback's going to be out for four weeks with a broken collarbone. You need to do something, right? So right. when... So when I see, for me, it's diagonal up at 120. So, and that's partly to do with Arden's physiology too. A 118 diagonal up that goes to a 120 is about to go to a 125 straight up in Arden. I know how that works. I can look at that line on that Dexcom graph and see it coming. So when right. she hits the 118, I can bolus. Mm -hmm. And that stops the arrow. Right. And so now I create a plateau and then I watch it. And if the plateau doesn't come back, then I readdress and I get it back again. But in my mm -hmm. mind, I've just messed up the bolus for the meal somehow. Had I put in whatever amount stops that arrow, if it was in up front, the arrow wouldn't have moved up. Right. There are also times, today's a great example, where Arden texts me and says, hey, I'm going to get um, breakfast. And I was like, uh, okay. So the last three times she said that at school, it's been a muffin. So I, I put in the muffin bolus that I had figured out. And then like 10 minutes later, she goes, oh, hey, by the way, uh, they didn't have any muffins. I got a bagel. <laughs> it's just like, now I live on the East Coast. <laughs> a bagel is a real thing here. It's like a real you, thing. If a bagel got stale here and I threw it at you, I could kill you with it. You know, like it's a big doughy thing, right? And it's not all like dry, like you in like Indianapolis are thinking right now, or, you know, like all thin, <laughs> like you guys out in California are thinking about. I'm talking, this is like a lump of like dough. Okay. So <laughs> right. I'm like throwing in more insulin. I'm like, Arden, this is not going to work. Right. But let's just see what happens. And it worked for a long time, actually, for like an hour and a half. We were ahead of it. And I saw the curve up. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, God, oh, God, it's coming. And I just didn't hit it hard enough. So now Arden's like 195 and she's stable at 195 and we are putting more insulin on to get it back down. But now I'm also thinking about two things. I'm thinking about this, you know, this stable, stable arrow, trying to turn it into a down arrow. 
And she's going to eat lunch in 45 minutes. And lunch is, I was just going to say, lunch is coming for you. So So, what do we do with that? uh, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with it. We're going to start an arrow, then we're going to stop an arrow. Okay, so we're going to make a really large bolus in about 30 minutes, about 25 minutes before she's going to eat. I'm going to bolus her whole lunch. And, and I am going to try to use her lunch bolus to drop this, to, to start an arrow, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to use the food at lunch to stop the arrow. To stabilize it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then I will reassess about an hour after she's eaten. But there's all different kinds of ways to stop arrows. Um, and oh, moreover, to stop the, the direction and the momentum of your blood sugar. You can, mm-hmm. you know, I've said it a million times, but you can't just think about how your insulin impacts your blood sugar. You have to think about how your blood sugar impacts the food you're eating, how the food impacts your blood sugar, how the food impacts the insulin. Like these things all have this sort of like weird symbiotic relationship together. And we get it drilled into our head that diabetes is about a number and making a number go down with insulin. So right. much, so much more than that. If you know right. how to manipulate those arrows, Meaning the direction of your blood sugar. Uh, it's, well, it's and you've also game. you've also paid enough attention, as you said. If you get that angled arrow up and it's one eighteen, you know what's coming, and you know what's coming because you've had experience with paying attention before. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, sometimes I actually talk to people about even watching to begin with when they're trying to be more bold with insulin, when they're trying to be more aggressive. I say. You know what? If you're worried to begin with, pay attention first. See what happens. See, let it, let it go up. See how much, once it goes up, how much does it take to bring it back down? Because if this is a consistent, that you're always needing one extra unit after lunch every single day, and even if your lunch is a little bit different day to day, you're always adding an extra one, one and a half units. Okay, well, one, something probably is wrong with your ratio because we need to adjust it, which also then just means you need more insulin up front, right? So we can learn from also watching and you don't have to watch for a week with aiming for high blood sugars just to be able to watch. You can do it a couple of times and say, okay, I've learned something here. Now I can be more aggressive and I feel safe about it. So for people who want a little bit of assessment, that's kind of also a way to do it. That's brilliant and 100% necessary. And what Jenny just said, here, you, right? What you just said was 100% needed, absolutely brilliant, poignant in the moment. Do you want to know what happened in my head when you said that? What? I thought Jenny just said, you have to take a strike. You do? Yeah. You have to take a strike so you can see how the pitcher's throwing. Right. right. Because you're going to swing at the first one and miss anyway. And then you've yep. lost the experience of watching the pitch cross the plate. So... Sometimes I took right? in my, in my, um, when I started doing half marathon to, to get to finally doing like a half Ironman and a whole full marathon and everything, mm-hmm. I took a lot of strikes trying to figure out what I needed to do to manage. Yep. And the strikes, they suck <laughs> from a like perspective of that mental internal management that you always are aiming for. It's going to work this time and I'm going to try this and there's going to be perfection. There's no perfection. There's, you get to a point of figuring some things out, like, you know, my long distance running strategies, I've figured it out. And unless something is completely just weirdly off 99% of the time, my strategy now works consistently, but I did. I, that's a great way. I took a lot of strikes figuring it out. How much nutrition do I need? How much bolus do I need to shave off? Do I need to change a basal rate during or after or how far ahead of time or whatever? And so some of it is it's strategizing. And I, I kind of feel like a 30 year Guinea pig. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to figure this out. But you know, (laughs) you know, it's interesting. It occurs to me while you said that is that you and I have Jenny and I are interesting. Like we, I don't think we have a, probably a ton of similarities, but we talk about diabetes exactly the same way, and we have the same sort of resolve about it. And it's obviously much easier for me to have the resolve than it is for you because you're living it. 
I just look at a person and go, yeah, don't eat that yet. Right. <laughs> yeah, then, okay, now start yeah, eating. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, she, and she's yeah. like, I'm hungry. And I was like, I wish I cared. Just don't eat it. Okay. So, you know, like, you know, uh, and that, and even that, like, right, is crazy. I just, I grew up in the part of the country where my, I've talked about it before. Like, my dad wouldn't have cared if I was hungry. If a doctor told right. me, like, you can't eat that for a half an hour, my dad would have been like, you're not eating it for a half an hour. You know, right. You're sad. Exactly. If you're sad, go tell somebody who cares. You, you know, <laughs> and, and so, um, <laughs> So I have just enough 1970s parenting in me to do that. Um, but but it is interesting. When you and I agree, we agree so incredibly. Like Jenny and I don't have like a – like we're not like out seeing movies together. She lives in Wisconsin and I live in New Jersey. Although I think <laughs> we are going to get to meet each other in person coming up. I think, I think I've – Hopefully. I think I've negotiated I think something. Atlanta – Maybe. Oh, I right? think Atlanta. We're gonna we're gonna probably bump into Atlanta. I think it's possible in Arizona. Um, oh, nice. And there's no way I'm coming to Wisconsin and not making them bring you. So, uh, yay. So anyway, um, but I, I love how much we agree about this. Like when people ask me, like why why Jenny? Like why did you choose to do it with her? I said, well, I had done hundreds of these podcast episodes. And I would always go back to the two times I had Jenny on. Every time she spoke, I just thought, wow, I agree with this person. Like, like, and, and, and I have, I, my narcissism allows me to believe that I'm right. So if I'm right and you agree with me, <laughs> you're amazing, right? So I don't know if you're actually amazing, but my narcissism thinks you're terrific. Awesome. So, <laughs> well, I think you're great too. <laughs> See? And Jenny has that nice accent. So you don't hear her being narcissistic. You just hear it from me with my Philly thing going on. <laughs> I got a beautiful text from somebody the other day that just said, I love when Jenny says carb. <laughs> really? Because your accent that you don't hear. So. I don't hear it. I, you know, I get, I, most of it I get for the O when I say something with an O in it, like yeah. Minnesota yeah. Um, or whatever. You know, I, in fact, a lot of people just ask, are you, are you from, you know, Minneapolis? Are you from Minnesota? I'm like, no, I'm from Madison. I live in Wisconsin. I am from the Midwest. I know it's my accent. <laughs> well, they were just like, it, it's just a text that said, I love when Jenny says carb. I actually got a message while we were talking about Vicky's episode that just says, uh, almonds don't have nipples. I'm laughing because I get a lot of like, uh, while we're recording, I still get my messages from people. And sometimes I'm like, Oh, that's from like another episode. That's so funny that they're listening to that while we're recording this one. Um, that's funny. but no, but seriously, I, you know, that's it. I think if you and I got married and had 17 kids with diabetes, we would just like, we'd <laughs> Rock just it. Be like, we'd be like the Brady bunch of taking care of diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I just, I feel bad for the time. We're not adopting your children. No. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about like your poor husband. Cause one day you guys are going to have a disagreement about diabetes and you're going to say, Scott would agree with me about this. And that guy's going to be like, who is Scott? And why is it coming up here in our house? <laughs> because I hear from a lot of <laughs> Jenny, you have no idea how many notes I get from married women who are like, my husband is tired of me saying the guy on the podcast says we should do that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's like yeah, don't funny. don't say that's... that to them. They won't like that. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Jenny. Yeah, my I... husband totally he totally knows your name and it and you know that we that we do these. In fact, he usually tries to keep um, our son Conan, who's two and a half, and he hangs out with during the day while I'm working and doing these with you. He usually tries to keep him as quiet as he can so right. that there's not like this big like. like ah! Listen, like in the background, you name a kid Conan, so. he's going to be loud. You know what I mean? That's a that <laughs> you might have done that to yourself yep. is what I'm saying. He is a loud Irish little boy. He is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is all about, I want it. I can do it. No mommy. I've got this. He, he's got it all down at two and a half. Yeah. Hey, you know what I'm going to do one day? I'm going to put a survey online to see how many people with autoimmune diseases have Irish um, heritage Ooh. because I'm telling you, the pale white people have trouble. Seriously. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like there's something about that part of the world that, you know, celiac and like, like that whole thing is very common through that bloodline. And my wife is, is, is English and Irish. So is she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, um, you know, Finland, I'm sure you're quite a quite familiar with the studies in Finland being the um, highest rate of development of type one in the world as yep. far as a country. Um, and from the studies that have been done there, they have really kind of narrowed it to the field of one, some genetic predisposition, but from that it has to do a lot with vitamin D. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, One, they're at a very bad, like, latitude for actually absorbing um, and being able to have their body produce vitamin D the right way from sunlight. Yeah. Um, But two, they've also found that there's something within the body, the bodies there that actually it just doesn't develop. And so they end up having very low vitamin D levels. In fact, I I can't remember the study when it was done from when to when it was like 2006 or 2011 up to like 2015 or something um, where the, they started supplementing at birth kids that were born in Finland. And once they started supplementing the rate of increase in development of type one stabilized. It didn't keep climbing. So it's kind of like a standard now is just supplement with vitamin D from birth. Um, I don't remember what the dose or anything was, but yeah, there's, there are some very specific like cultural populations that are very prone to type one diabetes. Uh, Orthodox Jewish are also have a very, very, very high prevalence of type one diabetes have you ever heard the the idea that the potato famine created depression in irish people that from ireland yeah mm-hmm. they, they, that carries on to this day it that's just like there's the that's the stuff nobody thinks about like you don't think about stuff like that in your day-to-day life no but, but, but there's i don't know there's obviously there's yeah you know, different groups of people who have been affected for I mean, listen to what you just said, for their distance to the sun or because they couldn't grow food for a very, for, what was it, five years or something like that. They, in the right. 1800s, they did, they just ate potatoes. That'd make you freaking sad. That's for sure. Yeah. It, you know, um, and then they say it actually changed their genetic code somehow too. I wouldn't doubt. I yeah. mean, the body, the body adapts, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, that's why we have so many different animals that have like, you know, developed in the sea and then they crawled out and they grew legs and whatever yeah. happened. Them. I mean, same thing in the human body. I mean, the real reason that we have some of the teeth that we have in our mouth is because of where we started out. And now we may not really use those teeth the same way. And, you know, it's. I just think it, it's it's important to remember when you're thinking about your diabetes that there are, are I mean, we talked about the variables, but there are variables that you are never, yes. you're never going to know. And so that's why I like boiling them down into simple ideas like be bold, stop the arrows, use more, more insulin because you, if you, you see people sometimes online get frozen trying to figure out what's happening. And when you get frozen like that, you're the person in the horror movie that stops running. And so, yeah, yeah. You don't want to stop and start screaming. He's got an ax. Just just remember, you just run. Yes. You don't have to outrun the bear, just your friend. Okay. So that's right. That's right. right. Don't go into the dark room where the funky noises are coming from. Escape. Move away from the funny noises. You don't have to figure out all the diabetes variabilities, just enough of them to get to the next moment. So, you know, like just try to keep in mind, you're not. You know, you're not going to be able to figure out everything that's going on, but you can figure out enough to live well. And and that's sort of my goal for everybody. I am going to stop this and say thank you. Okay. Okay, just a couple things here at the end. First of all, of course, thank you so much to Companion Medical, makers of the InPen, for sponsoring this episode. You can go to companionmedical.com to find out how your insulin pen could talk to an app on your phone and then talk to your Dexcom CGM help you make decisions about things like dosing, insulin on board, a lot of stuff, actually. You got to go check it out. It does more than I can just say right here. CompanionMedical.com. Check out the InPen. Thanks also to Jenny Smith for coming on the show and for sharing her knowledge with all of us. I don't think I've ever made this completely clear. I hope I have, but this isn't an ad. Like Jenny's not a product placement. Jenny's just a person I love having on the podcast. Integrated Diabetes doesn't pay for anything. I just share that with you because if you think she can be helpful, I want you to find her. So integrateddiabetes.com to find Jenny. And then I have one last thing. The show is so close to another milestone. I would love it if you guys could share the podcast with just one person who you think really might need it. Love it. Enjoy it. You know, anybody. Well, not anybody. Like, don't go picking up people's phones and bars and just subscribe. You know what? I'm not going to dissuade you from doing that. Let me, let me restate. I would prefer if you found someone who you thought would really like the show or could use it and got them to listen to it. 
But if you want to pick up people's phones and bars and subscribe them, I'm not going to dissuade you. I'm going to say I don't think it's right, but I don't feel strongly enough about it to stop you.